So I wanted to walk you guys through my thought process as I make a painting. I'm a jiu-jitsu player, so images pertaining to grappling have always interested me. Going through the Hokusai manga, you can find just about anything. And here I found a nice grip fight sequence that I thought would look good as a painting. I used to get excited and start paintings without any thought as to how they would be displayed in the end. Nowadays, I try to paint to fill whatever frames I have laying around the studio. These are some pre-cut pieces of arches that I cut off of a large roll. What I'm doing there is trying to find one that'll fit this 11 by 17 frame. Now that I found it, it's time to trim the paper to size. I try to keep all of my pre-cut paper square, so I should only have to make two cuts here. I'll save this piece as a test strip. For some reason, I decided to grind sumi for this project. That's not my normal workflow, but I guess I thought it would make for an interesting video. I was wrong. Apologies in advance. You guys are going to have to suffer through this twice. It takes a long time to grind sumi, and honestly, I'd rather be painting right now. That was painful. Now that I've got all that sumi ground down into something close to a pure black, it's time to dilute it into a few shades of gray. With black in the center, I'll prep a few reservoirs for the darkest shades of gray. I like to rotate around the flower so I can keep track of the shades later. Here I am selecting a few brushes to mix up the black into the gray. Nobody likes a dry brush laying around, so I grab the largest of the three I selected and start scrubbing the stone. This serves a dual purpose of cleaning the stone a bit and sourcing the black for the start of my gray wheel. Here I'm dipping it into the first water reservoir I created, and I'm adding some other water reservoirs to step down piece by piece. Now that I've got a fair amount of this flower filled up, I want to see what I'm actually working with. So I lay my flower out in my little test strip. Add another couple of water reservoirs for rinsing. All grays tend to look like black, so we have to test these out and see what we're actually working with. With the center being pure black, it goes one, two, three, four, five clockwise around the wheel. Five is very light. Holy cannoli. Three and a half minutes later, I think we're about to start a painting. I started sketching with the lightest of grays to kind of get a feel for the movement. Once I feel confident with my spatial relations, I move to a darker gray to flesh it out a little bit further. I'm really digging the interaction between these two, so now it's time to put a little skin in the game and lay some black down. There are plenty of ways to skin a cat, but I like to skin mine with brushes. Some people use nibs. Some people like to use archable pens. Brushes just seem like the fastest way to get me there. And this is the moment that tragedy struck. Truthfully, it could have been much worse. I got sloppy and dropped a brush on the left corner. This should be a pretty easy fix, so I'll just add another layer to his sleeve. And there we go, like it never even happened.
Throughout the lining process, I've been keeping my brush wet in reservoir number five. And now that we're finished, I want to see exactly how deep that gray has become. I want to change up the kimono a bit from my reference, so I go right to the source and search for a good crest. I want something that will be easy to paint, and there it is. There's not much of this kimono on the canvas, so I stick to the real simple pattern that Hokusai used in the reference. Then proceed with the new reed crest on the other kimono. And here is our complete line work. Next up is gray shading. I always like to deal with my background first. It lets me get a nice silhouette of my foreground and I can always balance my midtones and highlights depending on how dark the back layer gets. It must be a quarter past coffee. I add another layer of gray to the background here. I really want the figures to stand out. And now it's time to apply some shading to the grapplers to give them a bit of dimension as well. I guess I try to pick the obvious spots first and then just start building everything else off of there. And then I go back and add another layer of shading to really solidify everything I just put down. I think this background needs some violet. Let's get some color in our life. It's about time. That violet looks great. Uh, I think we need to get some flesh tone out and if I'm not mistaken, coffee time again. So I'm gonna make sure that my pigment is mixed proper and lay down a base layer of flesh tone across both figures. Sulfur green. This stuff has a very yellow hue once it hits the paper. It's going to look good jumping up against that purple background.
If I didn't pour it out of a green bottle, I'd have a hard time believing it myself. Layer number two. A little more green, a little less wash. We'll see how that plays out. pre-wet the sleeve for a big fade here. I really like how the green turned out on the second pass. I always like the way blue and turquoise work together. And I think these two colors will play well off of the yellow green kimono and the other figure. That's just the base coat, but I really like the direction this thing is heading in. pretty happy with the way these cool tones came together. So I called it a night there and it looks like I forgot to clean out my flower palette like a Dunsky. So I throw some water in there to try and soften it up and get to work making it, making it clean again. When water isn't enough, I've got this little multi-tool that I'll use. That's what we'll call that thing, a multi-tool. Scraping up everything off of the flower palette, and hey, voila, 
I think we've got a clean one again. Look at that pretty lady. I am so fortunate that that's my painting partner. She is so talented. Maybe I'll convince her to do a process video soon. If you'd like to see more of Lauren's paintings, leave some notes in the comments. We've got three warm colors on deck. It's time to start fleshing these figures out. I go a little bit richer with my ochre mixture for the flesh tone this time. I want the fades that I'm about to create to be a little bit stronger than the first round and give some shape and definition to the arms and chest area. Whenever I'm fading big areas like this, I generally use a two brush method. Paint brush and a water brush. Sometimes I'll pre-wet the fade like I did with the green kimono. Other times I'll just use the water brush to create the fade as its own, like I'm doing with the flesh tones here. If you're of a certain age, insert classic copywritten Batman music here. Feels like this painting is still missing something. With all those cool colors in there, we need some hot colors to balance it out. Two dudes grappling usually results in a little bit of bloodshed. So let's figure out how to make that happen in this one. Most likely it's gonna be a nosebleed. So, let's say the guy in the blue is the one with the bloody nose trying to fend off the guy in the green. I'm thinking green kimono really mashed old blue kimono's nose in good. So much so that he's got blue kimono's blood all over his fist and arm. They're probably having a good tussle. From 
in doing these bloody samurai paintings, I've found that if you're trying to depict ultraviolence, you really have to go a little bit overboard with the blood. I like to use a few different shades of red and multiple different brush techniques to get the splatter and drip effects that I'm after. I also try to think about gravity and how the blood might travel over the various surfaces as these two guys wrestle around. And for the coup de gras, let's break out the old splattered brush. I'm pretty happy with how that blood effect turned out. Unfortunately, it's time to get back to some more grindy business with this Sumi. I told you you'd have to sit through this twice. I had to, now you have to. It's much easier to watch it in time lapse than to actually sit there for 10 minutes and grind this thing out. Hope you enjoyed it, because that might be the last Sumi you've ever seen me grind. Yeah, that looks dark enough. I guess it's time to re-outline this whole painting. I'm not very happy with the strength of those original lines after we've painted all over them. I feel like this gives it a bolder and more illustrative look, which is really what I'm after. Now that the outline is complete, we've got one more little spot of business for the black. I think we can finally put this picture in frame. Hope it still fits. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Any little bit of support that you give, even if it's just as simple as internet points, really does go a long way. This painting will be available on our website, thecustomtattoo.com. There'll be a link in the description. And here we are, from reference, all the way to reality. This is the painting we made to share. <laughs>